everybody. I am trying to jump back on live again. I know that last week I was having tons of technical difficulties, so I just want to see if it's actually working. If you can hear me, both things are well. So I am excited about our topic today. It is called a detour or distraction. Detour or distraction. So I'm going to go ahead and open us up in a word of prayer. I was giggling because my great niece was here. She did some artwork on my whiteboard. And as you'll notice, she used a permanent marker. This is why you need to pay attention. But anyways, <laughs> I thought that was cute. So I'm like, this is her artwork. She said, this is her name. So dear God, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for hearing from your voice. We thank you so much for being an awesome God, a consistent God. We thank you for all of these things, dear God. I pray that as these ladies hear the sound of my voice this morning, they hear more of you and less of me, that they hear what the word of God says and how it's applicable to their lives. Um, we thank you for all these things in your son's name. Amen, amen, amen. So I was laughing to myself because I'm actually using this planner system right now called Best Self. And one of the things that it has you do is each day you start with your goals, you make your plans for the day, you say what your targets are for the day, you say all of this information with the hopes that by the end of the day, when you come back and you look at this journal again, you will have accomplished your task for the day and you just feel like a sense of accomplishment. And one part of it says to you, what were some lessons learned? The other thing says, what are some areas that were wins? And so it is 4.30 almost in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. And I have literally been trying to get to my office downtown since 7 30 this morning D did you hear that it is 4 30 in the afternoon i'm sitting in my home office but i was trying to get to my main office since 7 30 this morning and so i start my day every day in the word of prayer whether it's a day where i come on the videos or if it's a day where i'm just trying to even just prepare, but I really do try to start my day with a scripture, with a reference saying, God, what is it that you will have on my agenda for today? God, what is it that you called me to do today? And I try to be very intentional with that. And I realized that what would happen in the past is that often I'd have these conversations with God, I would create my to-do list, and then throughout the day, I would allow others, I would allow others, hear that again, I would allow others to hijack my agenda and move me on a tangent. And by the end of the day, I would be frustrated with myself because I would say, you know what? I had all these things to do. I didn't accomplish any of them. Now, here I am at the end of the day saying I have so much stuff that I have to do and I'm frustrated and I was angry. So part of the reason that I got this agenda was it has been keeping me on task for each day. And I usually only do it during the week. And then on the weekends, I'm like, it's a free for all and I'm okay with that. But today I started my day with some goals. And it was interesting because I was sharing with one of my accountability partners that I really feel like I'm, I have so much clarity these days on what God has called me to do, how he's called me to do it. And I really am being intentional on who I am working with, whether it's a client, whether it's a small business owner, or to use the terms that I'm learning lately is a micro business. And I've been just really excited about that. And as I was sharing with this one individual today, I was saying, you know, uh, what I was so excited about as I look on the reflection of my life is God allowed me to make a decision and say that I heard from God. And in 2002, when I stepped away from my corporate job, you couldn't have told me that I didn't hear from God. And then in 2014, what is that, 12 years later, he had me go through that same exercise, but this time it was different. It was different because I was prayerful about it. Um, I had scripture about it. I, so, I, I looked and I really was intentional about having wise counsel around that decision. And there were some conversations that needed to happen. And although in both cases, God didn't have a step-by-step -step strategy, the first time I did it, it was not necessarily of God, but it was a part of my process. So I'm thankful for it. But the second time that I went through that same journey, so it seemed like, I realized that although it didn't have step-by-step -step process, he did clarify me through the word of God why I was walking away, who I was supposed to serve, didn't necessarily say how I was to serve them. 
but it was clarity in that. And so the first time where I would say it was a teachable, expensive hobby, but I was calling myself a business owner. The second time I will say that God has blessed me with really understanding the full, like a, a totally different experience of what small business ownership is or having a, a level of empathy for people as they're navigating their careers or especially those people who are navigating their careers but are always pouring into others and ne don't necessarily feel like people are pouring into them. Now, it may seem that I went all around the mulberry bush to get back to what I was talking about today, which is detours versus a distraction. Well, one of the things that I've learned, whether it is being intentional with my day with this new planner system or just constantly seeking for God to use me, I realized that Tasha may have a to-do list, but God has a plan for the day. Tasha might have a to-do list, but God might have a different way that he planned to use Latasha today. And where success happens versus frustration is recognizing if it is a distraction or it is a detour that he has ordained. Is it a distraction or is it a detour that he has ordained? So what did that look like today? What it looked like today was there is a couple of relationships that I have and I've been working with these couple of relationships pretty consistently over the last, I want to say almost 10 years, one 10 year plus the other one probably around six years. And I have been having different types of conversations with them, but today was so rewarding because although my plan was to go downtown to talk about, you know, building this tribe and understanding what it looks like to pump up career chats. And I had all my things that I wanted to do today. I had an opportunity to walk side by side and be a thought leader, encourager, coach, slash consultant with two people who are very dear to my heart. And the insight that I gained on what it is that I do for those who are givers it was like purely a God ordained experience, one that I couldn't have planned for, one that I couldn't have anticipated, one that I couldn't even have tried to put together all these pieces on my timing at all. I mean, one of my favorite life verses is Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. When you think about God or orchestrating things with all his sovereignty and understanding what, how this goes with that and this experience goes with that and even this car getting in front of you or this thing slowing you down, this thing slow on um, speeding you up, it really just helped me with some things. And so what God was showing me or reminding me of, reminding me of today as our scriptural foundation was this. And let me just go ahead and put this over here in the actual comment section. Was he had me looking at Proverbs 3, 6 differently today. He had me looking at Proverbs uh, 3, 6 differently today. Hold on, let me put it here in the comments. And I'm going to be reading out of the NIV um, translation. And so in the NIV translation, this is what he says. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. And when I was thinking about being anxious, one of the things that's been a downfall on me using this planner system is when I don't feel like I'm following the plan, I will sometimes get a little anxious because I said, here I go again, allowing others to derail my plan. And what I realized today was the two people that I was talking to, neither one of them subscribed to the same level of faith that I do. But what I love about God, what I love about God in pure ministry, allowing him to allow you to be the church that the people experience is, if you know your word enough, you can use biblical principles to encourage and excite people to be a better version of who they are without being anxious if you say to yourself, this is not a distraction, this is a detour, which is a God-ordained moment. And you get outside yourself and you get a chance to really see the fullness of God working through you. And those experiences are some of the best things ever. Now, why is that so important to me today? Because when I was sharing with my friend earlier this morning about what God called me to do and how he called me to do it, it was to pour into others who are always pouring into others. 
Um, it was to pour into others who are always pouring into others. And so even when I thought about who is it that I'm to serve without looking for uh, this one can pay me or that one could pay me or what it would look like, it allowed me to see that if I really went down into this verse of Proverbs 3, 6 and say, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your, your request to God. And when you ask him to give you clarity, stop getting hung up on, I have my to-do list, but this is a distraction. Everything is not a distraction. Everything is not a distraction. It says in the word of God that he will make your crooked path straight if you follow him. The only way you can follow him and to have that discernment and to have that peace is you need to have that intimate relationship with him so that when you find yourself being anxious, you don't respond and react to your words. You go back to the promises of the word of God and you say, you know what, God, right now I have my to-do list. And although it may feel like I'm behind, I know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be to be the best version of me. And so where do I even say that this got bigger for me? It got bigger for me because I realized that when God allows you to not just love and minister in people, but they be, you become a confidant, to, a, confidant, a confidant for them to be a sounding board and that they know, trust, and like you on another level, you are then able to minister and have some just different types of conversations, but you really know need to know your word of God. And so I just wanted to encourage somebody today that might be frustrated because as you look at the plan that God has for your life, and if you feel like you're one of these people that are not where you think you should be for the reasons why that we can see with our eyes, understand that God is working on something so much bigger. He's working on something so much bigger. He is orchestrating things. He is putting things together. He's sending rams in a bush to you. He's giving you supernatural favor, but you can't be dis distracted by the obvious. You need to know that maybe when somebody slows you down, there's a reason he doesn't want you to get to that next destination. He has a divine appointment for you right where you are. And sometimes we just need to slow down and say, God, is this a distraction or is it a detour? Because you will be glorified and your kingdom will be built up because of the experience and the encounter that I'm about to have. So be encouraged today. Um, my little tip for you is, how do you get here? You say, you stay in your word every day. And then you want to make sure that you go into the day saying, God, use me. My hands are wide open. And going into conversations with positive intent versus what you might be feeling on the surface. Just go deeper so you can really enjoy that detour. So just be encouraged today. So dear God, we thank you. We thank you, God, because you are an awesome, sovereign God. Dear God, that you give us everything we need right when we need it, not before or not even after. You are our on-time God. I pray that anyone right now who is just really in a space where they don't even know what's next, I pray that you provide an encounter that they may have in the past seen as a distraction and they realize that it is a detour that only you could have set up. I pray that their minds and their hearts and their hands are open to that encounter so that they can have more of you and less of themselves, dear God. I pray that you give the women who are in this group clarity beyond anything they've experienced in such a long time so that they can have peace beyond all understanding. Dear God, I pray for those who struggle with their faith walk because maybe what it looks like in the natural isn't what you've let them see in the supernatural. I pray that they remind themselves that all you ask for is the faith of a mustard seed and they can then speak and declare your promises to move that prom that mountain from here to there. Dear God, we thank you so much for everything that you've done, that you continue to do, and that you will do with us all. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Have an amazing day, and I'm going to continue my day and not get frustrated that I didn't get to my office today. God bless, and I love you. Bye-bye.